Hi, Corey with Air Venturi. Today we're going to be taking the Avengex Tactical, going from the tube version to the bottle version. First things first, to begin the process, we're going to go ahead, make sure that it's clear, safe, and we do need to degas the gun. We're going to degas it the same way on all the Avengexes. So we'll use three millimeter included wrench right into the degassing hole. Just to let you know, the degassing process can take up to a couple minutes. Uh, you do want to watch the gauges as it's going. In this case, the regulator gauge still does have pressure in it. So we're going to dry fire this in a safe direction to clear the regulator out. Still have some air in it. There we go. We can hear the rest of the air coming out now. The gun's on safe and it's degassed. We're just going to go ahead and tighten up the bleeder screw now so we don't forget. All right, now we can begin the process of removing the stock. First things first, starting to process removing the stock, we'll take the three millimeter Allen wrench and remove the three screws holding the stock onto the Avenge axe. Second one's up here on the top. And finally one over here on this side. We'll get the four millimeter Allen key and remove the screw, holding the stock in by the trigger guard. This one could be a little bit tough. A little extra force on that one. Now we're gonna take the butt stock off. A couple ways to do this. You can pull this all the way back or you can remove it right off the gun, set it aside. There are two screws here. You'll need the three millimeter Allen key for these. Then once you find it, these can be a little bit difficult because you can't get a full rotation on it. So they take a, they can take a minute to get out. All right, tip this back, get the screws out. A couple things about this process, removing the screws. If you have a ball end three millimeter, it helps a little bit. This is kind of the most cumbersome part of the whole process. You could use the included three millimeter, but the ball end works a little bit better. Now we'll just lift the stock off, set that off to the side. Now that the stock's removed, we can access the four two and a half millimeter Allen screws that hold the Picatinny rail on and the one in the front that connects to the barrel band. We'll go ahead and remove those now. Can't just leave the video alone. Once those are all loosened, we can pull the Picatinny rail right off, set it off to the side. Next, we need to remove the barrel band we're going to go ahead and uh, get the fill cap out of the way. Then we'll just slide the barrel band right off the end here. It's good to give it good even pressure. There are some O-rings in there. Helping hold it in place. Now we can remove the tube from the action. To do this, you just need the three millimeter Allen key. We'll remove the set screw that holds the tube into the action. Good thing to note right now, um, we did degas this at the beginning of the video, if you'll recall. This is a good time to make sure that it is degassed. If not, go back, watch that portion. Remove it now. With the set screw removed, you can just pull the tube straight off the action. Now we can install the bottle kit. It's gonna include the bottle, barrel band, front pick rail. You are going to need the screws that held on the pick rail and the stock. We're going to put those back in. We'll go ahead and install the bottle now. I like to tip the action up so that I kind of push the O-rings in real good. Let those threads line up. You could do this process with a bottle that's been pressurized. This one doesn't have air in it, but if it did, you'd feel some resistance when the valve started opening. Next, we're going to slide the barrel band into position. There's a little tab on the front of the barrel band. We are going to make sure that that's facing forward as we put this into place. All right, I flipped everything around so that you could see the holes better here. We are going to need to line those four holes up with the four holes in the action. And this hole in the front of the Picatinny rail is going to have the front of the barrel band in it. So to kind of help position everything, get an idea where the barrel band is going to need to go, to set that there use it to line it up. Now with the same four screws, we're going to put them right back into the back of the Picatinny rail here 
to hold it into the action. And for the final screw in the front of the Picatinny rail that holds it to the barrel band, you can kind of look down through the top, get it lined up, drop it in, and then we'll tighten all five down once that one's in place. Now we can reinstall the stock. We'll start by setting it in place, getting the four millimeter screw, and we'll put it in to kind of hold everything together. We'll install the screws on the side and the top of the pick rail. And then the one in the top of the pick rail. Now we need to put the two three millimeter screws back in to hold the back of the stock in place. It may help to tip the gun up a little bit just to get these started. Now we can put the stock back on the extension by pulling up on the adjuster, sliding it into place. All right, and there we go. We've reassembled it into the bottle version. Now we're ready to go out to the range and shoot.